So yesterday I told you how the correspondence works, so how to turn a system into a matrix, and I told you what the row operations are. What we're gonna do now is talk about notation and then actually practice performing these operations and what they actually look like. So let's do a, I'm gonna write the notation in the context of doing a problem. No, I'll just use a notation right here, actually. So add one, multiple one row to another. So if we're going to do that, we would have a matrix like this. I'll do the notation in blue here. So <clears throat> some places you're gonna see, let's say I wanna add three row two, two row one. That's a lot to write right there. So what I'm gonna, uh, how I'm gonna denote this is I'm going to add two row one. So row one's going to change. So the way I'm going to write this is next to row one, I'm gonna write plus three R2. That means to this row, row one, I'm gonna add three row twos. So that's how I'm gonna denote adding one row to another row. Uh, swap two rows, that's the easiest notation that there is. If I wanna swap row one and row two, I just draw a little arrow like this. So it says take these two and flip them around. So that's easy. Uh, last one, multiply by a non-zero number. Let's say I want to multiply a row one by a third. I'm just going to put a little parenthesis, one third, just like I would denote in algebra if I want to multiply the whole equation by that number. So you just put that number in parentheses and that means multiply, whereas if you look up to the addition, you see the addition sign. So it's pretty clear up on the first one, I'm adding three row two, I'm not multiplying row one. All right, so that's how we're going to denote these. And let's go ahead and start out with an easy two by two, uh, uh, two equations, two variables system. Turn to a matrix, perform row operations. So I'll just write that as row ops. And then uh, row ops, we're gonna go to reduce row echelon form. That's a whole lot to write. The textbook is all about acronyms or abbreviations. So we're going to just do what they do, R-R-E-F, reduce row echelon form and then that will uh, we'll turn it back into an equation or to a system. All right, so our first system, x plus y equals five, two x minus y equals three. So step one, turn into the matrix one, one, Five, two, minus one, three. So there's our first step. Now we have to remember way back to what does it mean to be reduced uh, row echelon form. So anybody want to be brave and describe reduced row echelon form? So zeros down below and ones in the diagonal and then eventually zeros above the diagonal. So this diagonal is pretty small. I've been using blue so far, so I'll just, just put a little box around those two uh, in the diagonal right there. So what I wanna do is I'm going column by column. I'll do column one first. There's really only one column to do down here, which is get that two out. So I have to remove or I have a better way to say this is to remove zero out, column one. Okay, we're allowed to do row operations. So think of row, row operations as kind of like the moves you can make in a chess or checkers game, like the valid moves, and then reduce row echelon form, sort of the goal or the how you would win in a game. 
So that's how you get there is the row operations and the goal you're working towards is reduced row echelon form. So how many, so first of all what I'm going to do is use the one above to eliminate the two down below. So how many row ones do I add to row two? Negative two. Negative two. So we write minus two row one. So that means I'm going to take negative two row ones and add it to row two. And that should eliminate our two right there. So row one should not be changed. Now row two is going to be changed. Every element should be changed. <clears throat> so I have negative two times one, which is negative two, plus two is zero. That was the whole reason we did that. Now the other ones are going to get modified as well. Negative two times one is negative two minus one. That's negative three. And last up, we're going to have negative uh, 2 times 5, negative 10, plus 3 is negative 7. Any questions on this first operation we just did? The only time that you would see an, an element not change is if there was a 0 in the row uh, that you came from. Then you would be adding 0 times something to that row. So almost every element is going to be changing and in, in that row you're adding two. All right, we have our lower triangle down here. It's a little silly in this small matrix, but below the diagonal is zero, so that's accomplished. Now what we're going to do is turn our diagonals into uh, ones. So I already have a one up top. I need to turn this negative three into a one now. So what row operation turns that negative 3 into a 1? So I can multiply by a negative 1 third. Uh, let's talk about a move that would not do this. So I'll write in red here. I'm going to switch to a pen. I don't know if they're going to let me do that. It doesn't look like it. What would be the effect if I added three row one here? So I, I would be changing that zero that I just worked hard to get. So if I actually went through with this move, row one doesn't change, that's no problem. I would have negative three, zero, 15 minus seven, eight maybe, something like that. So I just screwed up the lower triangle right there. So that's not the move we're going to make. So don't do that one. <coughs> Let's get all that stuff out. Alright, so the correct move to make was stated as multiply negative by row 2 by negative 1 third. It's what turns that number into a 1. It's basically just the reciprocal. Unfortunately, we're about to have fractions, but that's okay. We're almost done here. So we have positive seven thirds. All right, so we have our diagonal. We have ones in the diagonal. Now what we're gonna do is work on clearing out above the diagonal. So I see an extra one in the first row, second position. How do I eliminate that one? inside that triangle. Add the negative row two. So we're going to add a negative row 2. So I'm just writing minus R2. So what happens here is 0 times negative 1 is 0 plus 1. So our original 1 is going to stay where it is because the other row had a 0 in that spot. So it won't change the first element. Second element is that 0. The third one is going to be 5 minus 7 thirds. And then last row I'll just write in here. So one thing I don't like to do is, well, I really don't like fractions, but I really don't like to do fraction arithmetic while I'm thinking about matrices. So I try to separate those two out.
If you're really good with fractions and you can just add those without using much brain power, go for it. But sometimes I'll forget what the next thing I would be doing if I spent 10 seconds thinking about that fraction and common denominator. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and add that right now. One, zero. So I got 15 thirds minus seven is eight thirds. Zero, one, seven thirds. All right, any questions on that last operation right there? So let's look at the form of this matrix. We have ones down the diagonal. Above the diagonal is zero. Below the diagonal is zero. So this is reduced row echelon form. This is as good as it's going to get for this matrix. And we can write down the equations now. So we're going to turn it back into equations. So write down the two equations we get. So we have x is 8 thirds, y is 7 thirds. Oh, that's really wide. All right, I'm just going to rewrite our equations over here. That'll be easier. So what if I just made all this stuff up and I was just messing with you for three days? How, how would we know if uh, this actually worked? Plug it in. Plug it in. So go ahead and do that, see if we're actually correct or if we're not. So plug them in, I got the equations right there. Should work on both, not just one of them, but both of them need to be satisfied at the same time. So both of them plugged in and worked. So we should be, well, not should be, we are finished with this problem. That is x and y right there. OK, so that was a two by two system. You can do this in less steps, in less row operations. And I did like an intermediate step. So it can be done in less row operations than we did right here. So now we're going to move on to a three equation two unknowns. So the instructions I'm going to write for these types of uh, systems is solve using a matrix. So when you see the using a matrix part, that means we're going to be turning it into a coefficient matrix and performing a row operations. So this system will be 3x plus 2y equals 1, x minus y equals 2, and 4x plus 2y equals 2. Step 1, turn it into a matrix. We have 3, 2, 1, 1, minus 1, 2, 4, 2, 2. So our diagonal is kind of strange here. So I just circled our diagonal. So what you should start by doing is reduce that lower triangles down to zero. And I recommend start in column one. So you're going to clear column one. So before I just turn you loose on this, if I 
want to add multiples of row 1 to row 2, how many row 1's do I add to row 2? To turn that 1 into a 0. Almost. It's definitely going to be negative. One third. All right. Problem is, then I'm going to have some thirds hanging out in the other two spots. Unless you like fractions, I recommend you don't go this way. Is there? Can you switch the first and second ones so you have the one already? I like that idea. So ones are good. Negative ones are almost as good because you can eliminate other numbers without bringing in fractions. So what we really want to do is have a one in the upper left corner. One of the ways to do it is make a swap. That's probably the most straightforward way to do it. There's another way to get a one. How could I use row three? I could basically add negative row three to row one. That would give me a negative one up there. So for some reason, this one was maybe an 11. I could use a combination of the three and the four to get a one. So I would turn one of those into a one and then put the one up in the top. So in this case, the fastest, most straightforward way to do it is make that row swap. So let's go ahead and swap row one, row two. And now we can use the one in row one to knock out everything in column one at the same time. So we're gonna, in row two, we're gonna subtract three row one. And then in column or in row three, we're going to subtract four, row one. So I'm going to give you two minutes to do as much reduction as you can, and ask any questions that you have. And if you do get to what you think is the answer, remember plug it in. Be sure.
So any questions on the row operations? You may have had a different path to get to this last version that I have here, but you should have this last matrix right here. So there should be, in this problem, there should be exactly one solution, and it should be, it looks like negative one, negative one. So any questions on steps I took? Again, we may not have the exact same steps, so we should be getting to the same. Uh, final uh, system. So I'm just going to write out those equations x equals negative 1, y equals negative 1, and that is our answer, hopefully. I'm just going to quickly plug in without spending, uh oh, that's not looking good. Let's see, positive 1. Hopefully that makes it right. Three minus two is one, and then we have one plus one is two, and four minus two is two. Okay, so that looks like it is a solution. All right. So in this case, there was basically an extra equation. It's hard to tell which of the three equations is extra, like which one I could eliminate. Uh, if you see the way the work is going, it looks like equation three was extra. Was that original? Was that originally equation three, or did, did that come from the swap? It was originally three, so I could have thrown out equation three and had the same thing. All right, so we're going to keep going. still be in two dimensions here. X <coughs> plus 2y equals 8. X minus y equals 2. X plus y equals 4. Be careful, my 4s look like my y's. Well, linear algebra is actually very easy because uh, there won't be any y's on the right side of equations. So. There's no way that 4 on the right side should be a y at the end. All right, so I want you to do all the steps. So turn this into a matrix, and then reduce it yourself, and try to uh, figure out what the solution is.
And you're going to find that the different problems can sometimes have slightly different ways they want the solution written. Some of them may want X's like that did, some of them may want T's and S's. So or the first time that we do an example that has a free variable in it, I'll make sure I write down all the different possible ways to write the answer out. do on my uh, next move is I'm going to swap row two and three so I can have my one up in a better position. Now you may be wondering how many operations can you do at one time? I would say don't mix operations. So if you're going to do a co constant multiple of one row, like you just multiply a row by a constant, you could multiply a second row by a different constant at the same time, but I would not multiply a row by a constant and try to swap at the same time. And you definitely don't want to try to swap rows and add a multiple of a row to another row. That's going to be way too much to keep track of, like what happened first. So you can do two operations at the same time, but they should be the same type. So either both multiplying by a scalar, I try to avoid a double swap unless you really know what you're doing, but um, to do a double swap. Uh, or you can, I've add, plenty of times I've added row one twice, like to two different rows. That's totally fine to do. But just make sure if you're going to do multiple operations, they're the same type of operation. All right, so I could multiply a row two by negative one, but let's just go ahead. I'm not too worried about this negative sign, so I'm just going to subtract row two down to row. Th Oop, I need to subtract three row two down to row three. So that'll be twelve minus six is six. Well, we got zeros in the lower left corner, so it is actually reduced row echelon form, but we have a problem here. What is, what can you say right now about our solution? The bottom one, zero, one, six. So let's turn this in back into an equation now. Remember, there was x, y, and then constant. So the last equation, is 0 x plus 0 y which is 0 equals 6. I'll write the other two up but once as soon as you get a uh, one inconsistent equation you can uh, write down no solution. Alright so right there we're looking at the third one this means no solution. There's no x, y values that are going to make 0 equal 6, at least not in this class. Alright, so we're done right there. You can just say no solution. You don't have to recombine things or do any more work. As soon as you see your row of zeros followed by not 0, you can say no solution right away. So next. We'll, we'll jump into three dimensions now. So 
the first equation x plus y minus z equals negative 1. Second equation x minus y minus z equals negative 1. Third equation z equals 2. So we'll write out our matrix here. 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. 0, 0, 1, 2. So what is a good first operation here? So yep, take row negative row 1 and add to row 2. So we're just doing a minus row 1 to row 2. That'll turn our second one into a 0. All right, finish this off. You should be getting exactly one solution. So there should be a single point solution here. Let's go ahead and finish this off. So our solution should be x is 1, y is 0, and z is 2. So that second row might make you a little nervous, but that 1 <coughs> is, all that means is basically y is locked down to be, in this case, 0. So it's okay to have not 0 in a row as long as it's not the very last term. So there's our solution. <coughs> So this system is in three dimensions, and there's only two equations. So this one's going to feel a little different than the other ones we did. So turn to a matrix the same way, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 5, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 2. So same as before, column 1 is always going to be first up. Subtract row one. So row one remains unchanged. Row two, 
zero minus two zero seven. And I can multiply a second row by negative one half. Unfortunately, we will have fractions here. And <clears throat> looking at this last matrix on the board here, is there anything I can do in the lower left below the diagonal? Or is that all done? So there's only one thing below the diagonal. So that's all done. So I'll circle the diagonal. Now above the diagonal, we can turn that one into a zero that I just put a triangle around right there. We can eliminate that one. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's minus row two. One, zero, negative one. Oh no, we have fractions. So that'll be negative 10 halves plus seven halves is three halves. Negative three halves. Any questions on the operations so far? So now we have a situation we haven't really seen before. So I can, I'm gonna write down the X, the Y, the Z, and the constant right above. So I just know X, Y, Z, um, and then the other one's constant. X is locked down, Y is locked down. What I don't see, there's no, uh, Z is not getting locked down here. There is a negative one in the Z column, but because it's not the only thing, there's also a one over here for the X. Uh, that does not lock down Z. So you basically can lock down one variable per row. And you can't lock down two. All right, so what this means, Z is free. So the fact that there was Z was not locked down, Z is free. Now there's a couple ways to write this solution down. I'm going to just use the letter Z this first way. So let's write down the two equations we get. There's, there are no more row operations I can do to make this any simpler. So we're done inside the matrix. There's, I can't make this any nicer. So we're just writing down the two equations, X minus Z equals negative three halves. And the second one, Y equals negative seven halves. So remember, all of our other solutions look like x equals, y equals, z equals. So they all told us x, y, and z. So let's try to write this in that form. So our final form should be x equals something, y equals something else, and z equals something else. All right, so Z is free. So Z, I can just write Z equals Z if I want to. I don't think that's controversial. So Z is itself, that's fine. Now Y, Y is fine. Y is already negative seven halves. Oh, seven looks just like my Z. All right, X however, is not quite in that form. How do I get X? by itself. Add Z to both sides, so we got, mm, let's go Z first. So we'll write it as Z minus three halves. So this would be one way to write it out. That would be written out vertically if you write it as a point. notation you can write it as x comma y comma z equals x is z minus three halves y is negative seven halves and z is just z 
So I think that question you guys just asked me was answered in this type of form right here. So this would be one way to do it. Uh, you can also, anytime there's a free variable, you can use a parameter or a different letter to stand in for that. So you're going to find that S and T are the two common ones that we use a lot. So you can use a parameter. Usually we're going to go with T and then S. And I don't think you're going to have any situation where you have more than two free variables. Let's go R next, I guess. Uh, you can use a parameter for each free variable. Just keep going with the solution in blue. Well, I'll switch back to black. So I'll just put a box around all alternative form. <clears throat> so in this case, we're going to let z equal t. And then I already have y is just that number, negative 7 halves. And we're going to do the same thing for x we did before. x is now z minus three halves, but Z, we're going to use the letter T. So now writing all together, X, Y, Z is going to be uh, X is first, so that's T minus three halves, comma, negative seven halves, comma, T. Those are the three different uh, ways to write this. Could you write z, z equals uh, three halves plus x? Yes. So I could have let x be free instead of z. Well, when? Okay. So, so I could have let x be free instead of z, and then I would have x equals x, and then z. Uh, z would be a function of x. Uh, but this usually you're going to pick the variables to the right to be free ones. Uh, so I'm not going to go over that, uh, writing it like that. Uh, what I am going to do, I accidentally talked about vectors too early, so I'm going to write this in vector form, because you already saw how we could write it vertically instead of horizontally. So I'm just going to write some vector notation. And I'll just go with the T version right here. I'm not going to rewrite all of these. That would take too long. So our X was T minus three halves. I am intentionally offsetting these horizontally a little bit. I'm going to rewrite this as T minus three halves. 0 minus, or 0 t minus 7 halves. And 1 t plus 0. I'm going to split this apart. Factor, I'm factoring out the t, that's just scalar multiplication. And if you took calc 2, or calc 3, no, calc 3, this would be a parameterized line right here. So again, it has the exact same information, just written it out in a different form. This particular one can be very useful because this is written uh, as a line in, in a way that's actually quite useful. This tells us a point on the line. Now in three dimensions, 
you know a point on the line, but you can't just say the slope's a single number. So the slope, you have to actually give three coordinates, which is a direction. So think if you, your pen or pencil, if the eraser is the point on the, this point, negative three halves, negative seven halves, zero, then your pencil will point in the direction of one, zero, one. So x is 1, y is 0, z is 1. I guess that would probably point something like not up or down at all, but maybe 45 degrees straight ahead, something like that. So your line would be traveling in that direction. Depending on what you're doing, some of these forms might be better than some of the other forms. I wanted to write out all the different forms because you're going to find that as you answer questions on web work with free variables that sometimes they're going to want you to use the letter T and S if you have two for variables. Sometimes they want you to use just original X, Y, or Z. So depending on what version, or really what question you're answering, they may want different uh, things. So this is a good place to stop. We'll do some more free variables because they can be definitely confusing at first. I'll make sure I do an example that has two free variables also.